Hello friends, this video on photosynthesis in higher plants part 14 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. So let us now move ahead with the next step that is chemiosmotic hypothesis. Now we will see the step where ATP synthesis actually takes place. So by now we know that we know three things. First step is light falls on PS2, electron is excited and electron is lost. So how the lost electron is compensated by water splitting. Now the electron which was lost, it moves through a chain or which is called electron transport chain. While it moves through the electron transport chain, a lot of energy is produced. That energy is utilized for chemiosmotic hypothesis to generate ATP. So now we will see what is that chemiosmotic hypothesis. So let us see what is chemiosmotic hypothesis. <coughs> So this hypothesis is going to describe the process of ATP synthesis. How actually is ATP produced? So that this that entire concept is known as chemiosmotic hypothesis. Why chemiosmotic? Chemi related to chemicals. So many chemicals involved, chemical equations, chemical reactions. Osmotic comes from the term osmosis. What is osmosis? Movement of water from region of high water potential towards region of lower water potential. So we will see how osmosis takes place here or what role osmosis plays here that the name became chemiosmotic hypothesis. We will get to know that once we know this hypothesis. So here a proton gradient develops across the thylakoid membrane. So this is the proton gradient which I was talking about in the previous slide. How is this gradient developed? This gradient develops by two factors. So what makes the proton gradient develop? There are two things involved. First thing is the water splitting reaction. So water splitting reaction. So what will water splitting reaction do? During this reaction, a lot of protons are produced and those protons will get accumulated in the thylakoid space. So thylakoid space is here. So the protons will get accumulated in the thylakoid space. So that is one way by which the proton, concentration of proton inside the thylakoid space will increase. What is the other way by which uh, proton concentration will increase inside the space that is by the electron transport chain. Now on the thylakoid membrane, this is the thylakoid membrane, right? So on this thylakoid membrane, PS2 electron transport chain and PS1 are present. So during this electron transport chain, the electrons are passed on from one carrier to another carrier. Now while passing the electron from one carrier to another carrier, as I mentioned before also, a lot of energy is released. So this energy is used to transfer protons from stroma to the inside of thylakoid space. So protons are taken from stroma. Stroma is this region outside. So these protons are taken and pushed inside the thylakoid space. So there are two ways. So how protons pushed into from stroma, right, during the electron transport chain, electron transport chain. I'm just writing it in short but you understood the concept right. So this will also push in protons to the inside. So what happens the result is that inside the thylakoid so if this is the thylakoid so the concentration of proton inside the thylakoid or the thylakoid space is very high and the concentration of proton in the stroma is very less. So this creates a proton gradient. So this is the high concentration, this is low concentration. Now by the concept of osmosis, what happens? Any particle tries to move from region of high concentration towards region of lower concentration. So here also the protons will want to move from the thylakoid space towards the stroma. So that will be their tendency. Now let us see what happens here. See, this is how it, the entire thing takes place. This is a better diagram to explain this. This is your photosystem 2. 
this is your electron transport chain and this is your photosystem one now when the electron is excited it passes through the electron transport chain during electron transport chain lot of energy is released they are used to push protons from stroma into the lumen the lumen is also known as the thylakoid space this is the thylakoid space so here hydrogen ions increased also due to water splitting hydrogen ions will be produced and that hydrogen ions will also get accumulated here so the pro concentration of protons inside the thylakoid space is more than outside so these protons would like to come out to the stroma because they would like to move from region of high concentration towards region of low concentration but how who facilitates this diffusion the, this type of diffusion, I mean, they cannot travel on its own because these protons cannot cross the thylakoid membrane on their own. So they need somebody to facilitate the diffusion that is known as facilitated diffusion. In order to facilitate that diffusion, we have an enzyme. We'll talk about that. Now, breakdown of this gradient release a lot of energy. Breakdown of this gradient means when the actual diffusion start to take place. That means when the protons start to move from this place to this place, then the breakdown of gradient occurs. That is the gradient is no more there. The difference start to reduce. Let us suppose initially there were uh, say 100 protons inside and 10 protons outside. Now once the, they start to move, what happens? The difference begin to decrease. This 100 will reduce to 80. This 10 will increase to 30. Again, this will reduce to 50. This will again increase to 50. So that means the difference will begin to decrease. So and this movement will release a lot of energy. And this energy is nothing but it is used in the synthesis of ATP. Right? Now who helps in the breakdown or who helps in the movement of protons from this area to this area? So let us see how the gradient breakdown occurs. As I mentioned before also, this has to be facilitated by some other molecule so that facilitated diffusion can take place. So who is the facilitator here? The facilitator is an enzyme called ATP synthase or it is also known as ATPase. So whatever you call it, whether ATPase or ATP synthase. Now what does it do? The movement of protons through transmembrane channel of ATP synthase enzyme into the stroma. So this is a protein which is embedded in the membrane. We, we know about the transmembrane proteins, right? These proteins are embedded in the uh, membrane and they act as a channel. So the protons or the particles can move through this channel of this protein and they can move to the other side. That is, this is your lumen. So here the protons want to move from lumen to stroma. So this protein, this uh, enzyme will help to act as a channel and it will pass them from lumen to stroma. So let us look at the structure of the enzyme ATP synthase, how it can act as a channel. So this ATP synthase enzyme has two parts, F0 and F1. So F0 part is this part. Here you can see this portion is F0, this yellow colored structure. So this forms the transmembrane channel. Why it is called transmembrane? Because it acts as a channel from inside the membrane, like how you have a tunnel in a road. Right? So that tunnel actually helps the vehicles to go. Like in, in a hill, you have a tunnel. So that tunnel actually provides a path or a road for the vehicles to pass because they cannot cross a hill. So that means you have tunnels. So it is also like a tunnel-like structure in the membrane. That is why it is called a transmembrane channel. So the F0 part forms the transmembrane channel and the F1 part connects the outer surface of thylakoid membrane to stroma. So if you see, it connects the outer surface of thylakoid membrane to stroma. This is the F1 part, the spherical part. So these hydrogen ions or the protons enter, pass through the F0 channel and then it moves through F1 and then finally it is released into stroma. So once this movement begins, the gradient begins to break down. That is the difference in the concentration between the stroma and the thylakoid space. The difference begins to decrease. And during this 
breakdown of gradient a lot of energy is released and that is when ADP gets converted into ATP when so much of energy is released this energy helps in the phosphorylation of ADP to form ATP because in ADP you just need to add inorganic phosphate to form ATP So this gradient breakdown will release enough energy. So when so much energy is released, ATP enzyme gets activated. So when the ADP enzyme is activated, only then the gradient breakdown will actually take place. And how is the ATP enzyme activated? By the formation of the proton gradient. So the step is something like this. As the proton gradient develops, when the proton gradient is high enough, the ATP synthase enzyme will get activated. Once the ATP synthase enzyme is activated, the protons will start to move from thylakoid space to stroma. Therefore, the gradient breakdown will occur. When the gradient breakdown occurs, a lot of energy is released. And during this time, this enzyme catalyzes the formation of ATP. The amount of energy released is enough to cause conformational changes to the structure of the ATP synthase, which results in the formation of ATP, or this can cause the phosphorylation of ADP. So what happens basically, how the phosphorylation takes place, this is ADP to ADP inorganic phosphate is added to form ATP. Right? So this is how ATP synthesis take place. So this is the place where ATP is getting generated. So now you know how ATP is produced during non-cyclic photophosphorylation. So this is how it is done. So now if you try to understand the process from where we started, you will get to understand, you will get the complete picture even though we are still left with a few more things. But still whatever we have studied so far, let us try to understand that as a process. So everything started with PS2. When light falls on PS2, the electrons of the reaction center gets excited and the electron is electron jumps out to higher energy levels and it is taken by the electron acceptor. This loss of electrons is compensated by water splitting. They will provide the electrons here and also this process will release some protons into the thylakoid space. Now this electron which is lost here, it passes through a chain of electron carriers down the concentration gradient in order to attain more stability. During this process, a lot of energy is released and this energy is used to push in protons from the stroma into the thylakoid space. As a result, the concentration of the protons inside the thylakoid space increases. This creates a proton gradient. When a proton gradient is created, the protons like to move from region of higher concentration towards region of lower concentration. That is, they want to move from the thylakoid space to the stroma. So for that, they need a facilitator or a protein structure who will actually help them to pass through the thylakoid membrane. So that is facilitated by the ATPase enzyme, which gets activated because of this gradient. As the protons start to move through this, gradient breakdown occurs which release enough energy. Now, during this gradient breakdown, the ATP synthase enzyme catalyzes this reaction where ADP is phosphorylated or inorganic phosphate is added to ADP to form ATP. So, ATP synthase is the enzyme which acts as a catalyst in this reaction. So this is how ATP synthesis take place by non-cyclic photophosphorylation. Now there is another purpose of non-cyclic photophosphorylation and that is synthesis of NADPH. So now let us see how NADPH will be synthesized. Thank you. Please visit www.examfear.com to watch more videos, attempt free online test, get free study material, Find tutors and mentors. Thank you once again.